On the top, this is the default HTML select control, and we're gonna create the one that's on the bottom uh, with the animation and everything. And yeah, let's get to it. First, I'm gonna create the basic HTML tags, the body, the head, and the doc type for HTML5. Now I'm gonna save the file, and I'm gonna double click on it to load it side by side with my editor. Now I'm just testing it. Now I'm going to create the drop-down function. Notice that I capitalized the first letter of it. That indicates that I'm going to instantiate it. Now I'm going to create a div container for our drop-down. Now notice the drop-down has an object that I sent as a parameter. I'm going to send it to IDDD1. Now notice the drop-down function that we created. Uh, we're using it just like a class, and I'm going to set its member variables. First, I set its options to the parameter that we passed in. And now I'm going to set its init function, which acts just like a constructor. It's the first uh, function that gets called when the object gets created. And again, the reason I'm using the this keyword is so that when we instantiate the function, each one will have its own unique uh, functions and variables. Now inside this dot element, I'm just going to put in that dd1 uh, div that we created. And inside that div, I'm going to dynamically uh, create HTML. The HTML is basically just going to be the, the different types of elements inside this control. So I'm going to have uh, a drop-down class that's going to have a drop-down value and an arrow. This is the main box that we click on. And notice that I put this inside uh, HTML template strings. Now I'm going to pass in the initial value of cat. We're going to get it from the options just like we did the ID. And here I'm going to use the dollar sign because we're using uh, HTML template strings. And if you notice, when I refresh that, it, it says cat on the right side. Now I'm just going to style the body and give it a little bit more gray. Now I'm going to style the drop down. This is the main box that we click on that holds the value and the arrow. So I'm just going to give it a border, a width, and a height, a background of white. And I'm going to give it a box shadow as well, a border radius so that it's not completely square, slightly darker color. And I'm going to give it a line height of 30 so that the content sits right vertically in the center. And I'm going to make it so that you can't select text uh, on it. And I'm just going to change the cursor pointer, make it display inline so that it doesn't take up the entire line, set its fonts, so forth. And now I'm going to style the drop down value, which is currently cat. I'm going to give it a display inline block so that it doesn't take up the entire width of the container. Uh, the arrow, I'm going to make position absolute relative to the drop down, and I'm just going to set it to the right and to the top. And you can look on the right side of the screen. And I'm just going to give it a color and a font size. Now I'm going to add bibs for the actual box that drops down. It's going to have a drop down panel, uh, which is just the container of it, and drop down items, which is the actual items that fall. And I'm just going to add a data array of all the items that are going to be inside drop down items. So now let's populate drop down items with a dynamic HTML. This is going to be the name of all the, the animals. So we're just going to get drop down items from the elements that we created before and we put inside the, the DOM. That's how we, we're going to find it. And now let's iterate over that data array with all the animal names. For each one, I'm going to append. Uh, basically a drop-down item that has the name of the animal. So, for example, cat. Uh, and it's going to go through all of them, and then I'm going to put that HTML that I just created inside the DOM. Now I'm going to style the drop-down panel that contains our items. And the drop-down panel is kind of unique that it's just like a dummy uh, container that's that always appears. Uh, it'll eventually have a background, a transparent background, but I'm going to set it to background yellow so you can see what it looks like. So there it is. Now inside of it, we're going to create the actual items that fall down. And I'll show you why we do that in, in a bit. But basically, I'm just going to give it its basic properties. And I'm going to set a left and right bottom radius to it, a box shadow. And I'm going to make it overflow so that it can, so it will have a scroll bar if there's too many items in it. I'm going to give uh, padding to our drop-down item just so that they're a little bit more spread out. You can see on the right, and I'm going to give it a hover color as well. Now this is where the magic happens. I'm basically going to transform the drop-down items, and I'm going to translate it above where it currently is to minus 200 pixels, so you won't see it on the screen right now. 
Now let's create the main click event of the drop down. Basically where it says cat right now, we're gonna make an event on, on that box. So let's create an event listener for mouse down. And I'm gonna do self.show. And self is equal to this. Basically, I can't use this inside of that add event listener because it's used for something else. So I have to use self. Inside the show, all we're doing is we're changing the translate back to zero. Remember, we did a minus 200 on the translate before. So it's going to come uh, back to zero. Now, in order to see this change, I'm just going to add a transition. So this will transition between those two values, minus 200 and zero. So now when we click on it, you will see it animate. And let's just get rid of that uh, yellow background. We'll just make it transparent. So there you have it. Now let's make the hide event as well. So let's keep a variable if it's visible or not. We're gonna set it when we do a show. And if it's visible, we're gonna hide it. And if not, we're gonna show it. Now the hide function is basically the opposite of the show. We're just gonna transform it back to minus, well, 255. I could have put 200 there. And now you see it? Now hide. Now let's animate the arrow when we click on it. So we're just gonna get the arrow. We're gonna find it within the DOM. And we're gonna set its transform to a rotate 180 degrees. When we click on it and when we hide it, we're gonna put it back to what it was. So as soon as I add the transition, you'll see it. So when I click on it, it rotates. And when I click on it again, it rotates back. Now let me just randomly add a few comments on some of these lines so it's a little bit clearer. Now every time we instantiate one of these drop downs, I'm going to actually add it to a list of drop downs. This is uh, just like a hash uh, keyed by ID. Now I'm going to create a utility function that's going to be attached to the window, not the object that basically you pass it in a DOM element and it looks through its parents for the drop-down ID and it uses this ID to get the object of the drop-down that we stored earlier inside drop-downs. And I'm going to use this right now, you'll see. So inside the on mouse down event, we don't really have access to our, to our object, so we're going to have to get it through that getDD utility function that I just created. And then we're going to call it the click event once we get that drop down object. And let's just write that click event. And we're just going to alert in here. See, so when I click on dog, it just typed in here. So inside the clicked event, I'm just going to stop the propagation so that the clicked event doesn't bubble up to any of the parents. And then I'm going to hide the drop down once we click on an item. And I'm just going to get the value, uh, the DOM value. And I'm going to replace the value with the new value that we clicked on. So for example, we just click, clicked on dog and it changed the value. Let's also add a callback function that basically runs whenever we change the value. So for now, I'm just going to alert that value. And when we change it, uh, we're going to call that callback function with the new value. So when I click it now, it should say horse. For now though, I'm just going to comment it out. Now check out this bug. When I click on the right side of the box, it still opens it. And in order to fix that, I'm just going to make the actual container, the, I, the DD1, equal to inline block so that it doesn't take up the entire line. So now only when I click on it will it drop down. Now let's create another drop down, we'll call it DD2. And we're just going to set it to, uh, to rabbit, the initial value, just so we can see how two drop downs work together. Now, when's, when one is over the other, you'll see that there's a little bit of a bug. In order to, to rectify that, I'm just going to, uh, whenever I show a drop down, I'm going to hide all the other drop downs. And we're not going to run this function if it's not visible, the hide that is. Now if you notice when I click on a drop down it, it closes the other one. It will close any other ones that are on the screen. Now another thing that I'm going to do is when I click anywhere on the screen, so like on the document itself, it's going to close any open drop downs. So I just added a, a mouse down event to the document that will do a self.hide, so whatever drop downs uh, currently open will close. 
and this part's optional, but I'm basically going to give it a custom scroll bar so that it looks the same across operating systems. So this will work for Chrome, uh, well, WebKit-based browsers like Chrome and, and Safari. All right, well, there you have it. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments below, and I'll try to get to them. And thanks for watching this tutorial. Have a good one.